Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about GameStop. Yes, GameStop and some of the incredible deals they have when they put magic cards on clearance. We all have heard of the winter Christmas sale where the booster packs were less than a dollar. I think the fat packs or the bundles were about $10. And you could buy as many of them as you wanted. There was no limitation. So if you were lucky enough to go to the GameStop, you could have purchased any quantity of cards for 75 to 80 percent off and that is quite incredible single boosters bundles decks dual decks lots of value now on the website you can't order this on the website anymore they have a iconic masters free booster draft pack so this is 10.99 and if you know anything about this pack it is supposedly MSRP around $30. And that's pretty crazy that they're selling it for 60% off. But not as crazy as their Christmas celebration where they, I guess, were getting rid of all the old Magic inventory. And once in a while, they have a sale like this. I would say save up for this sale. I've never seen discounts this deep before. And that includes Dave and Adams, Miniature Market. I mean, they're good places, but nothing comes close to the discount they gave during the holiday season where packs were under a dollar, bundles, I mean, under $10. That's really insane value. Plus, if you had GameStop reward cards and like you had points and stuff like that, you could get these things for like 90% off. Trade ends and all that. I know GameStop trade-ins are not good, but when you're just interested in buying Magic cards, it's very different. So there is a difference when you buy from someone and then you sell to someone. Trone told a lot of you guys are saying you had good experiences buying. That's not relevant for my video, previous video. I was saying that you people have bad experiences selling to them. So buying something from a store is very different from selling something to a store. Okay, now let's go continue and why this is important. This is very important because GameStop is continuously stocking. And if you have a GameStop, there are two GameStops in my mall. Two. And when I grew up, there were two GameStops in that my Exton Mall, which I don't know if there's still two. But both of them sold the exact same items. Like verbatim. There's GameStops like everywhere. It's kind of like a McDonald's franchise. The reason this is important is the reason that Walmart is important as well. The distribution would get people not to go to your local game store. If the Master Series, which is supposedly special and supposedly was reserved for the local game stores, are now available at GameStop, Walmart, Target, any of these places, the product is no longer special. And the large, there is a way bigger casual audience so the casual audience is what i'm a little worried about here so the casual audience would be going at walmart maybe they're doing shopping groceries maybe they're going to gamestop to buy a new video game they could just be like oh hey there's some magic product it's about the same as a game store a local game store and let me buy from them by definition they have no incentive to go to your fnm or your local game store to spend money there FNM players are notorious for not spending money. Go to an FNM and people bring their own food, which if it's hot food, I get, but sometimes they bring their like Snickers bar or bottled water. They bring their own food, which is fine. Maybe they're saving money, but they're notoriously frugal individuals, at least in my FNMs that I played at. They don't buy any booster packs. They don't buy any singles. They buy everything online. They go there to FNM, and when the prize payout isn't what they expected, they complain about it online. And this is Houston. Most Magic players who go to larger events or go to or tournament grinders, the whole point of being a grinder is you eke out every last five cents. And you could be a player grinder, or you could be something like a a card shock or a. Uh, card shark it's been a while since i said the word shark right where you say hey what do you value this at and you nickel and dime someone to death and i've seen that done 
the local game store is not making a lot of money from competitive players. Competitive players know to buy singles online. The only person who doesn't know that is the casual player. So the casual player, you have this large card, maybe 90 to 95% of the player base, I assume, is casual, meaning they have never gone to a GP and they've never even gone to an FNM. Maybe, like, I see casual players at pre-releases, but it's not the same. So let's talk about the mindset of the casual player and where they're going to be located. Would the casual player more likely be at GameStop or a local game store? And this is a person who's no interest in FNM. GameStop. The more times they see the product, the more they understand, that, oh, I can get this product at GameStop. I can get this product at the mall. I don't need to support a local game store that doesn't really, I don't really care about that. So why does this matter? Uh, this matters a lot. It used to be price. Local game stores used to have price and exclusive items like the Master Series. So you had to go to them. You did not have a choice. If you wanted Modern Masters 1 and you thought that was really exciting, you would have to go to a local game store. You would interact, maybe you do a draft. You might find a good community out there. That interaction for new players is completely wiped out by this business model which is just for money. I, I mean, I can summarize it very, very, very simply. If you give a local game store a product that people want, they will have to physically go to the store. That is foot traffic. Foot, tra foot traffic has more value than just a person buying the pack. That person might come back and be like, oh, hey, look at this merchandise. Look at that merchandise. Oh, look at this anime toy. Oh, I might buy this. Oh, this is really cool. So it has a large impact, not just in Magic sales, but in other sales. Maybe they get into Yu-Gi-Oh! that they want to buy some Pokemon cards. Getting that person into the store is not just what that person spends, but what that person talks to people about on social media, what they text to their significant other about how many other, uh, how cool the store is. Life or death of a game store is based on people showing up to the store. So not necessarily on how much money they spend, but if they are having a good time, if they have a positive experience, and if they tell their friends. Now, price and selectivity, those were the things GameStops had the advantage on because Wizards of the Coast WPN would give a better price to these stores. Now, with the internet and selection being so the internet right now is the king of price. Like that sports and comics or sports and jet, that whoever owns that company is selling boxes shipped to you for $70. There's no way they're buying that box for $78. There's no way they were buying Modern Masters or any of these boxes like Iconic Masters for what most people, most stores are paying. So they've been undercut in price. So they no longer have a price to offer the customer. And they don't have selection either because the selection has gone to, as you can see, GameStop. It's sad. And obviously, this is how big business works is it destroys little business. And uh, these local game stores, which are mainly owned by individuals. So it's not like a franchise chain of game stores. I'm, I don't know one I'm familiar of that has more than five or six. It's a hard business. It's not something that people do because they want to make a ton of money. It is not something that people do because it's... So I talked to seven people uh, via buying inventory, and I actually did buy inventory. I'll show it to you sometime later. And I bought a lot of it. Um, and uh, talking to these individuals, like it became very clear to me, like no one's having a good time. Like the concept of opening the store is going to be the happiest you will ever be. After that concept, you're going to be really sad. You're going to be a sad, sad person because you're going to re realize that your customer base is not going to buy from you unless you're the cheapest. Your Wizards of the Coast is not doing you any favors on price. You have no price, you have no selection, and you do not have a lower customer base. How are you going to survive? That's a very good question. That's a question I've been asking for my store. Um, my store is online website is not even open yet 
but I have a customer base who basically I went to at NYU I was pre-med so a lot of my friends are doctors and doctors tend to like artwork and I have a really good artist I will show you my business plan a little later like I think that would be interesting to show you the business plan of how we're going to make money by not make money and not break even but we should be our revenue should be equal to our expenses by July 1st would be my expected date it's hard um, I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's easy and it's easy to have a magic store no it's so difficult and you're you don't have anything that would set you apart from my GameStop. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.